Hello and welcome, my name is Daniel and in this video I want to show you my reloader rig for Cinema 4D which will render with Octane, Redshift, Corona and default materials. Okay, let's take a look at the Corona renderer version here for Cinema 4D. And as you can see, um, uh, in the objects manager we have this null object which is called reloader rig and then a selection object which is called to reset rig unlock layers. And you can see the geometry and to see the geometry and materials, you have to unlock the reloader locked and hide layer here, uh, unlock it and unhide it. And as you can see, now we see the materials here, which are assigned to the geometry of the reloader. We have four light materials, for Corona Renderer light materials, which are assigned to the different lights. Then we have a glass material, which is assigned to the glass of the lamps, and cable material, which is assigned to the cables here of the reloader boom, and then a bluish uh, glass material, which is assigned to the glass of the cabin. And then we have seven other materials which are assigned to the different parts of the reloader. And as you can see, if you open up this rig root null, you can see the different parts of the reloader. We have um, the front part, the bucket part, the tires front, the cabin, the middle part, back part, and the tires back. And the different materials are assigned to the different parts. Let's jump into one of these materials. And as you can see, we use the Corona Renderer physical material here and ev everything is done with PBR workflow. So in the general tab, you will find the metalness map. And if you jump into the base layer, you will find the albedo map, roughness map and normal map. That's it, four maps for the whole um, reloader part. And if you jump into another material, you will also find the same maps, only four maps here. Okay, that's very easy to handle. And um, now we want to take a look at the rig of the reloader. And for that, we can simply um, hide and lock this layer again. And then we select our reloader rig master null object. And here we have some user data. Let's jump into the Goro shading lines and wireframe mode. And as you can see, that's the default geometry with no subdivision um, added. And if you want to have subdivision in your geometry or if you want to add subdivision to your geometry, you simply enable this button here. And as you can see, now it gets subdivided. And you have the subdivision editor settings to increase or decrease the um, subdivision stops for editor. And of course, you have that also for your renderer. Okay, um, let's disable the SDS settings and take a look at the rig here. I disabled the SDS settings to have a nice and smooth viewport here. We have the boom controls, um, boom lower and lift to lower and lift the whole boom. And as you can see, the hydraulics and cables follow automatically. And then we have the bucket tilt controller to simply tilt the bucket here. And as you can see, everything follows automatically. So the hydraulics and the boom crank and so on. Okay, then we have the lights um, controls here to change the intensity of the lights. So I simply enable my um, viewport renderer here. And as you can see, if I change the 
intensity for the front lights maybe to 50 it gets brighter and of course also the top lights get brighter and if you want to have no light you simply put in zero and the lights are off wonderful let's take a look at the um, drive controls here and the whole rig drives along a spline and to drive the rig along a spline we have to create one so let's jump into the top view here and create a nice spline maybe something like that and maybe we create a curve here something like that and of course you can change the spline type to any type of your choice and in this case I change it to cubic spline to have a nice curve here and we make sure the intermediate points are set to uniform that's very important so if we take a look at the drive controls here the um, spline control is named uniform so make sure your spline is set to uniform intermediate points and with this icon here you can simply choose your spline in the objects manager and as you can see now the whole rig snaps directly to the spline let's make the spline bigger something like that and as you can see we have some other controls with which are called swing out angle front and swing out angle rear and you can simply adjust the controls here um, or you may have to adjust the controls here to make it look plausible and of course you have to animate these controls to drive along the spline wonderful and with the position slider you can simply animate the um, position along the spline of the reloader rig and i can simply animate this uh, position maybe something like that wonderful and as you can see we have a controller which is called tire rotation on off so the tires rotate automatically so if I disable materials and maybe enable lines, you will see the tires rotate automatically. Wonderful. And if you don't want to have the automatic tire rotation, maybe you are rendering a still and the tires rotate uh, weird, so you can simply disable the tire rotation and as you can see now the tires won't rotate anymore and to reset the tires rotation to a default state you simply make sure the tire rotation is enabled and then you can um, simply hit the reset tires button and as you can see now the tires are um, at the default um, state wonderful and if you don't want to animate this um, rig along the spline anymore you make sure you don't have any keyframes um, at this um, controls and then you simply clear the spline here and then we have this selection um, object you simply restore the selection and of course you have to make sure to unlock and to unhide the layers and then you restore the selection and with the reset transform command you simply reset the whole rig back to its default um, position and i think that's it that's the reloader rig for cinema 4d Thanks for watching this video, see you soon and goodbye.